it'll be easy for Sandy when she helps me edit. Um, thank you guys for joining us for the ninth session of the Women and Minorities in Business series. My name is Billy Roberts with Levcus. We are a community development uh, financial institution that provides lending, investing, and community innovation services. Thank you guys for joining us today for this uh, ninth session of the empowering 10 week journey that's dedicated to fostering success and inclusivity. Um, this series is designed to provide women and minority business leaders with the essential skills and strategies needed to excel in today's uh, ever evolving workplace environment. Today's session will be recorded. We've already pushed record uh, for training and educational purposes. And if you need to ask questions or want to contribute to the conversation, please um, use the chat also because we're having some audio um, issues today as well. Um, now, without further ado, please allow me to introduce one of our remarkable remarkable speakers who will be sharing her uh, insights with us about overcoming obstacles and navigating difficult situations. Renee is the Global Sustainability Leader at Universal Fibers, overseeing initiatives to improve product services and manufacturing processes while reducing waste and resource usage. With 20 plus years in manufacturing, Renee held leadership positions in quality system improvement, regulatory compliance, and more. She holds an MS degree in um, colloids, polymer, I'm, I'm sure I mispronounced that, polymers and surface chemistry from um, Carnegie Mellon University and a bachelor's degree in chemistry from Tuskegee University. Renee values true sustainability, focusing on people, natural resources, and communities where we live and work, proudly residing in the Tri-Cities region. She champions responsible practices for a better future. Take it away, Renee. Awesome. <laughs> hey, well, thanks for that great introduction. Little technical difficulties there, but that is life. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Um, I am excited to be a part of this discussion today. So I want to thank everyone for taking the time out of their afternoon to spend time with us. Um, I'm gonna be talking about overcoming obstacles and navigating difficult situations, which this is perfect. Um, it's an honor to have been asked to talk about this and share my thoughts and perspective, which I feel like um, I definitely will leave you with some insights here. Um, when I received this kind invitation from Billy, I was just honored that um, to take some time out and discuss and have that engagement with you. So sit back and relax. Hopefully by the end of it, you will walk away with a few nuggets to help you move forward in your endeavors. And hopefully you will develop some skills that you can use that will help you navigate adversity and transforming difficult situations into growth opportunities, because that's exactly what it is. And that's exactly what you need to see the situation as. So I applaud you guys for taking time out your schedule and billing, willing to uh, have this discussion and your attention. So let's hop right into it. We'll go to the next slide. So the outline for our agenda today for our workshop structure, we'll talk about common obstacles, microaggressions, you know, what those are, how to recognize them, what to do in, in, in that event. Then we're gonna talk about owning your accomplishments, which I think for those of you who are on your entrepreneurial journey, this is something that you will really want to make sure that you take time to do. It will be key to keeping you motivated and on track. We'll talk about strategies for success, um, building resilience. And then lastly, we'll wrap up with Q&A and just go ahead for the Q&A, just go ahead and put your comments or questions in the chat. And that way I'll be able to go ahead and hit on that. Next. Um, as we talk about in today's presentation, I am not gonna go over um, my background. So Billy can go ahead and keep going forward on that. Um, what I will say uh, with regarding to my background is number one, Today is my birthday, so I chose today to be here with you guys, so thank you. <laughs> Next slide, Billy. Um, and also, one of the things I'll mention is that I have been in the manufacturing industry. Yay, thank you, Christy. I have been in the manufacturing industry for over 30 years, um, and so that is a predominantly male industry. And um, there was a time when I started 
back when I started working here, I actually started in a working for a company called Valspar. And anybody who knows what, who's been into Lowe's um, probably seen the Valspar paint. They're a paint company headquartered out of Minneapolis. And I started as, as a paint chemist. And so working in a lab and formulating paint. And I used to always joke that I was literally paid to watch paint dry because that was what my job entailed. Back when I started, there weren't a lot of women in the lab. And believe it or not, being surrounded by chemicals, you actually could smoke back in those days. Can you imagine going to work and people smoking in a, in a laboratory with chemicals, flammable materials? So that's kind of how long I've, I've been in the workforce. I've been, I've been in the workforce since there was a time when there used to only be solvent-based paints on the shelves. And I was you know, part of that whole time frame where we worked on formulating water-based chemistry. So why do I bring all that up? I bring that all back up because you know, I've seen how things have changed over the time. And as that being said, while some things have changed, some things remain the same. And we'll, you'll see that on this next slide that we'll go to, if you'll bring that up. Well, on this next slide, one of the things that you, you see before you is the gender pay gap. And unfortunately, it's a stark reality and probably no news to anyone on this call is that women um, tend to be paid less than men. Um, specifically for me, that in the manufacturing industry, we make about 70 cents for every one dollar um, that our counterparts are, are made. And this graph shows that on average, the woman makes about 80 cents for every one dollar. Um, and if they are a minority woman or Hispanic and Latino, they're about 54 cents for every dollar that the male is made uh, makes. And for black women, that, that's somewhere around 63 cents for every dollar. And for Native American women, that's about 60 cents. So anywhere from about a pay gap of anywhere from 36 to 46%. So why do I bring this up? Not to depress you, but to give you my own um, experience and expertise when I talk about overcoming obstacles and they can be gender obstacles, they can uh, be a variety of obstacles. One of the things that I have found that has helped is Number one, being armed with information, the right information. So in this instance of a pay gap, you know, when I was found myself in this situation, you know, I conducted analysis about, you know, what I should be making so I can have those tough and difficult conversations about some of that pay gap that I was experiencing. I did research online. I pulled together what um, common pay wages were for people in my um in my field. And so whatever your situation that you're in, knowledge is going to be the key for having those hard discussions. So knowledge, number one, but two, there's a timing aspect to, to having these difficult conversations. So I'll give you an example. I had um, wanted to go in and talk to management about um, a raise. And one of the things that I recognized that I was dealing with was I was not being recognized for my contributions. And so I thought, okay, what can I do? First, I started off saying, oh, there's nothing I can do. The company is just like that. They won't recognize me. So what I said was, no, at the end of the day, I'm responsible for me for navigating that shit, right? So I there is no rule that says you can't nominate yourself for awards and recognition. So that's what I did. I had this obstacle I needed to overcome, wanted to get an increase in pay, did the research, but ultimately I had to have that hard conversation about a pay increase. I put myself in for a variety of awards and I won them outside of my company. So I ha started having customers say to management, hey, that Renee who works for you, she's really good at this. Or I had, um, I won one award on a national level where the people actually had to come into my company and take pictures. So you got companies coming in, taking pictures because you've been awarded this great award. And now you have management standing next to you going, yeah, we recognize the contribution she brings. Yeah, we, we think she's wonderful too, right? And so once I had them on board with that conversation, you know, rightfully so or not, whether or not they were truly backing me or not, I then was able to take and use that information to build that conversation that we were having about the pay wage. So what I did was I read this book called um, Knowing Your Value. And that's one of the resources I will I will link at the end. Um, it was called Know Your Value, Women, Money, and Getting What You're Worth. And it was per, the author is Mika Brzezinski. And she's actually a host on Morning Joe on MSNBC. And I read that book and I knew it was time for me to 
cross this hurdle and have that discussion for a, uh, a wage increase. So I'm pulling all this information together and I'm thinking, this is gonna be a great conversation. I got all the ammo that I need. So when did I decide to have this conversation? 2020, okay? Um, as you can imagine, at this early stages of the um, pandemic, companies didn't know what they didn't know. Everybody knew this was bad, something was happening, that they need to tighten their belt. And so they did. And so now was not the best time to have this conversation with companies about doing a, a, a wage increase. But I'd done my homework. I had the education. I knew what I needed to do. My stock had never been higher. If ever there was a time to do it, I had to take that leap and do it now. And I'm, I'm having this, I'm making an appointment to talk to my manager. I'm seeing people walking by me with, with their boxes, with, with all of their stuff packed out of their office. And I'm thinking, if I get fired, this I'm going to have dummy written all over me. But but once a good stood fast, went in there and I had that conversation, presented that data, and I was amazed that I got the, the that I got the pay raise. I I just kept looking around like, really? That, I'm thinking to myself that worked. So I bring that up not to brag, um, but to say that you got to trust the process. You got to educate yourself very much. You know. Um, entrepreneurship and and building a business is all about education. That's something you should always be doing. And so I applaud you guys for taking time out this afternoon to to be educating yourself on on these different issues and what you need to do. So I applaud you for that. So common obstacles, although we say common, but they may or may not be so common. But the end result is that what you need is education and equipping yourself with that education so you can have those difficult conversations. So what are other obstacles you will find yourself navigating? As we go on to the next slide, I'll talk about microaggressions. So what it is, understanding those obstacles and what you need to do to help navigate that as well. So microaggressions, they're considered to be subtle yet significant challenges. It's like maybe you're a person who's a foreigner who's having a conversation and you come into a conversation and a person has a certain bias or stereotype where they keep asking them to repeat themselves. Or the sometimes people will do gestures or focus on reflective biases or stereotypes. So recognizing when you see those and being able to address them and tackle them head on, everything that's going to be like a resounding uh, theme here is, is tackling things head on. And as you as an entrepreneur or a person who's working their full-time job and has a side hustle or a business on the side, and you're putting those teams together that you're going to need to be successful when you see this happening at a workplace and you're trying to build those teams for success, you want to be able to address them, just them head on and have that conversation because you're relying on that team to help you build your business and take you to the next level. So you want to call them out and you want to be respectful on it, but you also want to have that dialogue to, to frame addressing those issues. Um, so you want to set clear um, boundaries and expectations. You want to create this environment of inclusiveness, and you want to be able to put effective training in places where it need be to help address those issues. Lexi, on the next slide, we'll go to, and this is something um, to this day I still struggle with and I have to make sure I focus on, is you want to focus on owning your accomplishments. So this is this road of entrepreneurship and building a building uh, a business it can be a long, slow journey, and it often can be lonely. So it's important that you enjoy the road, you enjoy the journey. Um, I think you had um, a, a contributor that talked in one of the sessions, they mentioned a book, um, Chop Wood, Carry Water. Um, that may, I think that's a good idea. They also mentioned about um, that they like to journal. And that's one of the things that um, I like to do as well. Um, you want to shift your focus from moving from self-doubt to celebrating your achievements. Um, and that will be essential. 
often women and minorities, we downplay our accomplishments due to imposter syndrome. So it's time to acknowledge your strengths and your contribution, no matter how small they, they are or that they may seem to you. And a great way to do this is by journaling. Um, you had a, a, a speaker mention that they, you know, millionaires get up really early in the morning, sometimes at 5 a.m. It's a habit that they create. I am not getting up at 5 a.m. There is there just did no now, I, I can't even roll over at 5 a.m. But what I can do is before I go to bed at night, I like to brain dump and dump everything into a journal, write and reflect on my day, what I did right, what I think I need to focus on, what's bothering me, um, and what I'm grateful for, what 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 went right. Some days, some days it's just the fact that I was able to get a hold of my contractor and that I was able to nag him long enough for him to show up and do his job. That was like, woohoo, that was <laughs> that is an accomplishment. And what you'll learn as you take those small bites of accomplishments is that the best part is when you fill that journal up and then you look back at it and you think, wow, all of these little steps, these granular steps that I took they led to the final prize, that final big prize. It's not sexy. The journey is so not sexy, but fall in love with it, appreciate it, and recognize that you're not alone when you're going through this. Um, if, if there is only one part that you take away from this discussion, that's it right there. I'm working on that myself, and it's an easy, um, it's, I won't say it's easy, but the approach is well laid out and, and it will do you so much good if you can just focus on that and you don't need perfection to, to achieve that. So as we go on to the next slide entitled Strategies for Success, we talked about overcoming obstacle, how it requires effective strategies, mentorship, networking, self-advocacy are vital tools. A lot of that may come in the form of, like I said, education, educating yourself about where you want to be and who can help you get there. Seeking mentorship, you know, finding those people who can guide you. And some would say uh, one of your past presenters talked about sponsorship and having someone sponsor you who can advocate for you when you're not in a room. And for those of you who are like, Okay, where do I find a mentor? Where do, where do I find these people at? You know, that can be difficult. Everybody's so busy. I, I got you. I understand. I, I agree. So one of the things that um, I, I would take as, as an action item to think about this as far as looking for mentors is I am a podcast woman. That's going to be your homework today when I leave you is I want everyone on this call and anyone who listens to this presentation afterwards is shoot me an email and let me know your favorite podcast. So I'm going to give you a podcast. There is an actual mentor podcast that you can actually listen to until you're at that stage where you can actually find a podcast. And it's called The Mindset Mentor. And it'll be in the last slide. So don't worry about writing that down. But The Mindset Mentor, that's where I listen to when I need that jolt of a mentor and I need it virtually. When you talk about networking, this presentation, this, this discussion, this planning that we have, these resources that Billy and everyone has organized and pulled together, that's a form of networking. I expect everyone to reach out to me after this presentation and just, if nothing else, say happy birthday to me, you know, to make that connection, okay? You never know how a person you meet today will be able to help you in the future. And what I find is that most people are more than open to doing so. Um, so resources like meetup.com, that is a great way to find out about uh, meetings that are taking place um, in your area related to what you want a, a topic or an area of focus for you. So feel free to go ahead and, and engage with that. So strategies for success, no one does it alone. Okay, there you, you won't get a badge at the end of it on your journey or wherever it is you want to be, being able to say, I did all the hard work alone. Let people help you. They're open and they're willing and they want to help you. So do that as well. Though even just if it's no more than them telling you about their mistakes, those are the strategies that are going to help you be successful. All right. And as we move to the next slide, where we talk about building resilience, building resilience is crucial to overcoming workplace, workplace challenges and challenges in itself on your entrepreneurial journey. Setbacks and failures are part of the journey. 
Embrace them as opportunities for your growth. Resilience means learning from um, adversity, not avoiding it, learning from adversity. Bouncing back stronger and staying committed to your goal. The action steps that I want you guys to work on is your resiliency plans. You know, if what you're working on, if it doesn't go as you'd like it to go, what could you pivot and do instead? So, so here's an example. Um, I recently bought a, a duplex, and you know, so you know, I have my W two job that I actually love, um, but you know, something that happened to me back in two thousand and eight. So back in 2008, we all know, I, I tell you, I just have the worst timing when it comes to major crises. But back in 2008, you know, we had the financial crisis and I wound up getting laid off from my job. Now, I had never been laid off from my job. I was always under the impression that if you work hard, do what you're supposed to do, that you will be recognized and all will go well. Well, anyway, I got laid off from my job 2008. And I remember I was so stunned that when they laid me off, I remember thanking the person, you know, going, thank you. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. And I remember driving home and pulling off on the side of the road and boohooing. I mean, I was just wailing. I was doing the, the ugly cry, the snorting. My, my eyelashes were falling off. My The glue had come up. I was just a mess. And I remember the... Um, a state trooper had came by at the time and he pulled over to ask me, was everything okay? And I, I tried to do a brave front and I was just like, everything okay? <laughs> and the poor guy, he looked like he wanted to run away so fast from me. Like like he wanted to be anywhere except with, with me. And, but anyway, I just told him, you know, I just let it all out. Cause I, I was like, what do I do? I lost my job. I'm a failure. I'm a loser. Who am I? If I don't have a job, that's my identity. You know, what do I do next? And I would love to tell you that he bestowed some wisdom on me, but the guy was just like, okay, ma'am, have a nice day. Drive safely. And he just, I never seen a man run away from me so fast in my entire life. But anyway, so, you know, I came back, I sat for a while. I'd like to tell you that I pulled myself up by the bootstraps. You know, I made this plan and I said, I will never be in this position again where I depended on a job to take me from A to B. That's what I said. And I want to tell you in the next sentence how I took charge and I did this, but I didn't. 2008 came and went and years went by and I found another job and I completely forgot about not completely, but I, I forgot about that vow that I made to myself about how I would never be in that position again. Then, 220, then um, 2020 rolls around and COVID happens and people are being laid off. And I thought, here we go again, Renee. You said you would never be in this position again. And and you you failed yourself. You didn't do it. So I was like, that's it. You know, this job could fire me today or tomorrow and I'm going to you know, put something in place to be a safety net because right or wrong, I still identify myself as the daughter who's responsible to take care of her parents and her family members. And I could not fail in that. So anyway, long story short, I wound up going, um, buying a duplex. Um, I didn't know anything about contractors and that is a, a workshop in itself on how to deal with contractors. But it's, at the end of the day, it's all about people, motivating people, and listening and doing your best to, to get things accomplished through other people. It really is that skill set. So anyway, I buy this duplex. Um, one side uh, is now up and running and it's a long-term rental. I have a great tenant in there. And the other side is, is essentially an Airbnb or, or midterm rental. And um, I wanted something that would be financially a little bit more aggressive than a long-term rental, but I wanted to balance the risk. You know, what if this Airbnb stuff failed or, or didn't work out? I, I couldn't have that unit empty. And so I minimized the risk and built resiliency in the plan by having a long-term tenant in one and then doing a midterm rental or, or, or a short-term rental and the other. And it is going great. Um, and it's running successful so much so that I, I went and, and built in another plan to, to, to continue on. So we'll see how that, that goes. Um, I have no desire <laughs> to quit my W2, but I wanted that safety net in, in case, um, 
you know, things turn or there's another big event, you know, stay tuned. I'll be tuning in next time to tell you guys about another big event. Um, but bottom line, it's it's about setting those, those, those clear goals and about building in resiliency, whatever that looks like for you in whatever stage of journey that you're in. And so as we move to the next slide, um, the bottom line, set clear goals for your career. It won't go in a straight line. Sometimes there'll be ups and downs, but you learn from them. Focus on personal growth, constantly educating yourself. I, I, I now, when I get in my car, I don't even turn on the radio anymore. I put on a podcast. Um, I'm, I listen to a variety of podcasts. There's one podcast that I want to check out that I haven't yet, and it's called uh, Negotiate Anything. Um, yeah, God, yeah, thanks. Yeah, podcast. I love them. It's free. It's called my microeducation. That's what I call it. Um, regularly celebrate your achievements. You know, at, at the end of the night when I'm writing in my journal, I have a um, a thing that I put on there. One is exercise. I do okay with that. But um, one is exercise. And the other thing is education. And that's part of my personal growth that, that I'm always trying to do. Um, and it allows me to look back at what I did accomplish, you know, so regularly celebrating my achievements. Sometimes it's just me drawing, you know, confetti or stars or, or hearts um, to celebrate my achievements, whatever that looks like. Um, workplace inclusion, start with addressing bias. You know, I'm learning not to, and it's an ongoing thing. I'm learning not to be afraid to speak up for myself, speak up for things I need. And that's a, that's that's hard for women and it's gonna take time. It's gonna take education. It's something you grow into. You know, now at my age, I, I, <laughs> I joke now, I was like, at my age now, I'll just spit out the truth sometimes. <laughs> and that comes with age, but you know, don't you don't have to wait for that. Um, the, the other thing is ensuring a virtual workplace diversity inclusion in a group effort. I am always seeking um, education and knowledge from the people that I'm around whether it's virtual, whether it's live, just learning to adapt to that, um, constantly learning. And so as we go ahead and wrap up, Billy, if you move to the next slide, I want to thank everyone. Um, I want to thank everyone for listening. Um, if you, like I said, go ahead. If you have any questions, put them in chat. If you think of something later that you want to reach out to me and just, you know, ping me for something, go ahead. I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you'll go ahead to the next slide, um, I definitely want to say um, thanks, Billy, to, to you and your team, and just want to just put out to educate those who are on the line about December 12th, action planning and the next steps that will be coming up. Um, there's This was a great forum and a great speaker event, and I really love um, a lot of the topics that have been discussed. And Billy, if you'll take me to my next page on resource page. Um, you had a, a wonderful um, lady uh, who spoke. Her name was, I believe, uh, Sharice Chambers. I have been binging her podcast, Business After Dark. She was a great speaker. I love her podcast. I love all those free gifts that she gave out during her discussion. Um, that podcast, The Mindset Mentor with Rob Duell, definitely dial, go ahead and definitely check that out as a resource. And that book that I, I used to help me get more than a 15% raise, um, the biggest raise I've ever had, which, which was called Knowing Your Value by Mika Brzezinski. And I am like a, a person who loves a good steal. That book, um, knowing your value, it is in the library system. So you don't even have to buy it. I, I have the QR code up there if you want to find that book um, on Amazon, but you can, there's nothing that says you can't go to a library and check that book out, okay? So go ahead and do that. And then lastly, you'll, you'll see a QR code for some of my favorite journals. You know, I heard someone talking about, you know, peace and having that peace. Um, so this journal called My Peace Matters, um, there's a um, scan me for a QR code that'll take you to a goddess journal. I love a good journal. I love, I, I, I have a whole stack of them. I love just writing down what, what's going on within my life and my emotion journal, you know, it's a, it's, it's already set up with questions and a, a, a great graphic um, to, to cue you if you need a little bit more prompting about how to think through your day and how to organize your thoughts. So as we wrap up here, I want to thank you guys. Thank you, Billy. 
And um, I will now turn the mic over to you, Billy. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I'm trying to type to Renee since she can't hear, but uh, I, I, um, unfortunately, I'll just, I'll send her a message later. Um, so I, I just thought this was great. I just related to so many things that Renee um, had to say. Um, and I think that when you're to the young people that are, that have been in the workforce for like less than 10 years, um, everything she's saying, I think that we can all relate to. If you're in the workforce long enough, you're going to have a moment where you think you're going to lose your job for whatever reason, changes in leadership, changes in, in whatever. And, and like she said, you think you do your job, you do a good job at it and you'll be, and you'll be secure. And that's not always the thing. And to reflect that on your self-worth is it's a, it's a whole moment. So I, I really appreciated that part, but I just wanted to say, um, Thank you so much uh, for everyone joining. We will follow this up with um, an email uh, with the link. So you'll have everything that you need there and you'll be able to access the QR codes. Um, remember, uh, if you guys have questions or need any help with anything, you can always reach out to me, Renee, also. Um, I loved um, when she talked about networking. And so even if you're getting this on your email, make sure to reach out to Renee for a happy birthday and make a connection. Um, Thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> um, your contributions today um, from, from Renee were just exceptional. We really look forward to the opportunity of welcome, welcoming her back in the future. Um, Let's see. Our next session is on Tuesday, December 12th. That's actually our last session. We will be discussing action planning and goal setting. And I mentioned earlier, but I'll remind again, I'll be sending everyone an email um, that will have a short five question survey. Um, and you'll just answer those questions. It's about your workplace, your mindset with that. And then what I'm going to try to do is come up with an action plan specific for each person that responds to that email. And we will discuss that at our next session. Um, thank you all. And until next time, stay inspired and stay connected. Thank you all so much.